Um, well, you know, it's never <laughs> it's never pleasant to see that anywhere. Um, I will have to say that, and, and again, it's it's never, never. I, I, I'm never. It's never good to use that word anywhere. Um, however, um, I do think there are when a situation like this happens. Um, of course, immediately you're, you know you're upset, and you and usually your instinct is to get really mad and lash out back, but. Think you know you have to kind of calm down, so look at the situation. Um, what was the context of the situation, um, and who who was it directed towards? What was the audience? Um, and, and look at the person's past. Does this person have does this person have a history of this type of behavior? Um, because I think when, if you don't do that, I mean, one thing I had to learn really, I had to learn to grow up. And, and and understand was that so you can't you have to be able to let people make you know uh, make amends for their mistakes you have to let people be able to grow and learn and see that this you know that this was this was not a good situation this was not right and a lot of times that they become people like that have made mistakes like this turn around and become the best allies you could ever ever have ever asked for because you know like i said it, it's the i don't and as long as i've known anything about coach Huggy or coach Huggins, i've never heard seen any of this before um he seems like a very kind caring man I, he, he seems to love his players um i don't think it was met in the way that um some people may have taken it and the other thing too is um, we have to be very careful that we don't start to put ourselves into these, as ourselves, meaning the gay community, LGBTQ community. Don't feed into these, these, these traps that we get into where we're just this, you know, ready to plunge at everybody who does anything differently than the way we think or, and we, and we don't give any room to learn or grow. I mean, I'll give you a perfect personal example. I mean, I grew up, my dad would say the same thing, up for, and when, and after he knew of me, and, um, and eventually my partner, Chad, um, he took Chad, and his dad was like his son, and, and our children became, you know, and he was very happy for us and was our greatest supporter. So I really think it's a, I really just think it, it, it's, it's, Yes, it's a, it's an ugly, ugly word to use, and I'd like to take it and got just wiped out. But I still think we need to take in, its instance as it comes, and and give people a chance to grow. And like I said, I mean, we could we could develop one of the best allies we could ever have in the future. So appreciate your approach to that uh, there, Joe. And uh, the one million dollar reduction in salary for a year three-game suspension, and uh, effectively has been put on a short leash with one more violation, the WV president says, is an immediate termination. Any thoughts on the punishment? Um, I'm not, I can't really, I don't know what their standards are at WV, you know what I mean? I think it would my, I, I, I think it's a little strict, but at the same time, um, you know he he's in that position, and he has to remember that he has a huge voice. And I think when you when you have that kind of reach reach to people, and you and right or wrong, he can influence people how they think and how they feel. And I think maybe that was where their punishment comes from. You know, um, I could think of about. <laughs> I mean, not to change the. Direction, but I could think of about 25 legislators that should have been fired over the past five legislative sessions for using the same words, and they're and they're considered heroes. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's and then they were they actually targeted the, our community. But um, I'm hoping that it, it turns out to be a great positive situation, and that um, he, you know, we can look forward to him to being a great ally for us. John Gilstrap. Oh, man. Um, 
the thing about issues like this, where we're talking about offensive words and and or offensive thoughts or offensive points of view, that it actually becomes difficult to talk about because you can't even talk about what it is we're talking about, right? You can't you can't use the words. Words are my life at, at this point, right? I'm a, I'm a writer. It's really important to me. And I do not understand. I, I'm not an apologist for, for Bob Huggins. I don't, I, sports is not really my life. Um, if, if I'm, I'm aware of the situation, but it, in my mind, words are inherently harmless in the absence of intent. So there are slips of the tongue. People get to a certain age and there are phrases when, when you're in a role that just pop out. Now, why that would happen on the radio, I don't know. I mean, there, there should be some filters that, that are hanging out uh, that should be in place. So, you know, it, yeah, it's a terrible word. It's a, it's a terrible way to approach. Times have changed. Things that used to be not offensive are inherently offensive. But people do make mistakes. I don't know if this if the punishment is proportional or not. I mean, if, if frankly, the guy can afford to give up one million of of the four million dollar salary, okay. I mean, a million dollars is is a bunch of money. But if you can afford it, it's only a year, and you move on. The good news out of this, as far as I'm concerned, is that he wasn't canceled. You know, it's it, it, he, he's not completely sidelined. He continues to get to do his life's work just with with the burden of of an additional penalty and and moving on so i you know i think there's good news and bad news probably the wrong phrase out of this but i i think it seems that there was a proportional reaction from the school in punishing him but not not taking him completely offline and and firing him joe the the not i'd like to hear your comments on uh the not being canceled part of what john said because that's a big part of our culture now Oh, I mean, I, I actually, I 100% agree with that. And um, because, and um, I like to, I, I think the left gets an unfair amount of the blame for that when we just, we watch books being canceled, history being canceled, other things being canceled from the right just as well. I think it's not just a, um, I think cancel culture eventually is going to be seen as something that we historically was will be horrible for the future. Um, I'm I'm very much of a person that you know you don't erase, you learn, you don't you know mistakes. These kind of situations are incredibly um, can be unfortunate, but are great learning tools and. Because you you have the evidence there of what was wrong with it, what happened, you know, and then that you grow from that. So yeah, I'm not a. So I mean, um, I think certain things belong. In, you know, I'm like if you think about Confederate monuments or more, I believe they have their proper place in the world. I don't think they need to be thrown away and destroyed. Um, I don't think they need to be in front of courthouses. Different. Uh, I know this is a different situation, but just talking about cancel culture. Um, I think that we need to we need to make sure that we're not canceling away everything that we can learn to grow from, and it's and it's ultimately it's part of our history, bad and good. So, yeah. and as someone who um, advocates for the teaching of truth and history of the United States, you know, it, it, you can't can't pick and choose what is good and what is bad that you want people to know about you but know about your country or about you or about your past. So fair point. Yeah. Um, I would have the million dollar, I will say that I wish they would have, I don't, I don't know. If they are the million dollar penalty. I would have loved to see that go to something than just, it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It good. Is. I wasn't sure if it was or not. So it's, that's, it's that's being directed. It. Yes. Matt, Matt Harvey. Okay. Good morning, Joe. Uh, I really, uh, am, appreciate your view on this and, and how this is an opportunity to move forward and move everyone forward instead of just canceling someone that's that's really refreshing to hear and and i certainly applaud you for that so i'll just switch the gears a little bit if you don't mind um i think you've covered that that topic pretty well but so in your estimation what is the number one topic that's facing the lgbtq plus community in west virginia um 
I, I will say the falsified or, or the the propaganda of ch- of protecting children to about eliminating rights to the LGBTQ community to protect children when there is no protections needed for children from the LGBTQ community. Can you can you can you explain that a little bit? Like what, yeah, what, sure. Yeah, um, so I give us an example that, so we know what you're talking about. Sure. Um, well, on, on one hand, uh, when it comes to transgender and medical equality, you have you have a a completely unproven um, issue that children in our in the United, in West Virginia and across the United States are being um, gender mutilated. You know, um, being being forced into um, transgender situations. Um, because of parents or because of school or because of whatever. Um, that's completely not true. Um, then you have um, let me see, um, not wanting to allow transgender people in bathrooms, which has been going on for as long as, as I've been fighting for transgender rights, um, about the myth that, that transgender people are predators in bathrooms, which is completely is is a non-starter because it's never been. I trust me. I've done all the research on that. Um, that somehow, um, and, and, and one of the other things too is that um, I, I don't. I, you know, I'm a I'm a defender for the Constitution. I don't understand this where you. And I'm a Christian. I mean, I'm a Catholic. I grew up with. I mean, I'm a. I'm a very faithful Christian. Um, I don't understand using faith as a means to take away, as a means to not treat each other fairly and equally. And that coming, that especially going to like RIFRA that they just passed. This idea that someone should be able to tell me that I can't eat. I can't get food to drink in their business simply because of, of not but because of who I am, but also because of who they choose or what they choose to believe on any given day. So those are just a few of the issues. And I kind of got caught off a little bit guard because I thought we were just going to talk about coach. But go <laughs> yeah, ahead. Sorry about that. Har- Harvey threw us a wrench yeah, on that uh, one, but you fielded it well. well. He, yeah, he did so good talking about Huggins. I think he covered it at all, so we had to move to something. Yeah, you're good. Matt, you have a follow-up on that? Matt Harvey. No. no. no I'm a- Very good. Uh, Mr. Uh, Gilstrap. No. <laughs> uh, well, I, I have an insight or a comment. That mm-hmm. I, I, when, when I was thinking about this situation with, with Coach Huggins, and I can just imagine that the, that the hardest time he's going to have is not writing that check for a million dollars. It's going in, setting that locker room. And, and knowing that he disappointed those young men that have chosen to follow him to West Virginia. And I, I just I, – I think that's where he's – that will be have more of an impression on him and will help guide his future decision-making than writing a check for a million dollars. I worry that it can go the other way too because people are going to feel that – people fall on all sides of, of issues like this. And – it, it could very well be that the people will so rally to to support him, that feeling that he had been wronged, that it actually in the locker room will have the the opposite effect. I don't know if if, if that would work or not, but I don't think it's reliable. I think he has been really embarrassed, and a lot who wouldn't be in these circumstances. A lot lies on his shoulders. How how does he handle it? Is he repentant? And is is the the is well, it coming from a legitimate place? Joe, what do you think the road game reactions are going to be for Bob Huggins and his basketball team this season? Um, I agree with what was just said. I mean, it, it, there's unfortunately this situation, <laughs> and it comes from both, from either side. It, it unfortunately can't be let alone to heal and to move forward um, naturally and 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 be allowed to be, let the people that are closest to it let them be able to do it themselves, and because it's going to get so much attention, of course they're going to be rallying him. To, you know, they're going to come people that are going to run to him and say, you know, oh you you know I agree you know you should you know 
you should be able to call people which one, you know, whatever. And then there's going to be people who say, oh, he should have been just, he should be gone forever, forever saying that. You know, and the sad thing is, in the middle there is where the good and the and the and the really positive aspect could come through it. But I think he has. I think he he and the university and the team and they they can have some. I hope that they guide it. Is what I'm trying to say. I, I think that he can really um, thread this needle. And and keep this moving in the right direction because I think he's a decent person. I mean, I, like I said, I've never. When I saw it, I was more shocked than anything else because I had never in a million years would I've thought. And but and and I and after I thought about it, I really don't think that's how he feels. I just think it was a bad choice of words. I'm gonna tell you, I would be the first one to say if I had a camera in my face a lot of times. I would probably be in a heck of a lot more trouble, <laughs> to be honest. I mean, well, don't so you I think, think I make people nervous sometimes when I get on camera? Don't you think of a history professor, as opposed to the football coach? If the history professor had done the same thing, he likely would have been fired. Um, I I don't I don't want to speculate. I don't know. I don't know how much how it would be by, by college by college. Well, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't want to add my voice to that without really knowing. You know, because then again, I try to be as um, what's the word? And I hate. And we, but we have to be that way today. I try to be very, very careful about how what I say. And you know, even though I have a small influence in West Virginia with groups I'm involved in, I don't want to hurt anyone or anything by by flipping up and saying something I really didn't know a whole lot about. So I just, I know how I felt about this issue, which is why I agreed. And I know, talk, you know, I haven't dealt with Rob before that he's a good guy. Fair. And so I felt comfortable to come on. Joe, good to talk with you again, man. I know you're very busy at work and I appreciate you working your way free for a few minutes to be with us this morning. No problem. No problem. And um, thank you all. And uh, thank you for listening. You're the man. Thanks. All right, talk to you there, bud. Bye. Joe Mercurio at 901.